Good day, Creator Spirit. And this morning we will start with some Hosanna, loud Hosanna from Voices United 123. <laughs> Voices United 124, he came riding on a donkey, and just to continue with that upbeat feeling and having a little fun and celebration and parade-like, you can even do some, some donkey, some donkey walking, some donkey walking noises. All right, here we go. Election today, you can certainly tell that it is Palm Sunday, this coming Sunday. And when we think of uh, donkeys and Jesus riding into town, you think of a parade, palms waving, and and perhaps you might think of your favorite parade, um, be that you know the Santa Claus parade, the Grape and Wine Festival parade, or or maybe. You know, January 1st, you always tuned in on television to the Rose Bowl Parade, or um, maybe it's parades that honor, you know, 
the, the veterans who, whatever your favorite parade is, I'm sure that when you think Palm Sunday, um, you probably think of children's parades and, and waving of the, the palm branches. But all of those instances, I'm sure, bring to you a sense of, of celebration and a sense of, of community and um, hope, if nothing else. And it's hard uh, right now to have that sense, I suppose, of, of hope, but with, um, I know personally, with longer days right now, and uh, with some warmer temperatures that we've had, there is, you're starting to feel like there is light at the end of tunnel, so to speak. But I was thinking, you know, what would a parade look like uh, right now during this time of pandemic? What would a parade, would Jesus come in still on a donkey? Would he come in instead um, in a, an electric car to make a statement? Would he uh, walk in? Would he bicycle in? Um, would we not be able to wave palms? That's not something that we have a lot of access to around here this time of year. Uh, so would we just be banging on pots and pans? Uh, what would we be doing? We'd have to be keeping our distance, right? But it is that sense of celebration. And so I have a reflection um, for you today from a uh, minister, um, Stephen Fetter. Uh, from Forest Hill United Church in Toronto um, had this reflection called Drawn Toward New Life. It's party time this week, palm branches, adoring crowds, joyful hymns, and excited songs. Maybe there were vendors in that Mount of Olives crowd too, making the most of an opportunity that dropped into their laps to make a quick buck out of the excitement. What's not to like about a bit of happy chaos? Well, if you're charged with keeping the peace at a rebellious time of year, there's a lot not to like. Up to 300,000 people packed into Jerusalem for this annual festival of freedom. Jews from all over the empire came to celebrate how God had rescued their ancestors from the oppression of Egypt's Pharaoh and helped them become an independent nation. The chaos for so many visitors wasn't always that happy. Romans and Jews alike could make the obvious comparison between the ancient Egyptian pharaoh and their contemporary Roman overlords and tempers got heated as the religious fervor increased. Everybody knew that the soldiers were particularly vigilant as the crowds swelled. It was never safe to challenge the authority of the Roman rulers but doing it this time of year was even more perilous than usual. What could have possessed Jesus to make such a public fuss at exactly the point in the year when it would be the most unwelcome? Why choose danger now when he'd spent three years sliding under the radar of the authorities? It must have been pretty dangerous for Moses and the slaves to stand up to Pharaoh too way back at the Exodus. Unlike Jesus, they escaped with their lives, but their road to freedom was hardly easy street. It included the flight across the Red Sea and a couple of generations of wandering through wilderness, worrying about food, water, and snakes. I wonder if Jesus chose this most dangerous time to come to Jerusalem precisely because he wanted to remind his people that salvation is something God has been working at for centuries, and at that, each generation needs to catch this ancient vision afresh. Some of us will make crosses out of our palm branches this Sunday. That's more than just a pretty craft, and certainly we here at Creative Spirit know that. It's a reminder of the connection between this week's party and next Friday's catastrophe. Some of those palm branches will be saved and burned next March to make ashes for the Ash Wednesday service. A reminder that sometimes, in spite of everything, our best hopes turn to dust. And that still we don't have to give up on them. This celebration is complicated. Changing the world is fraught with danger. You follow a leader who raised hopes to a fever pitch 
and God executed for his troubles. If we walk the way of Christ, there will be costs for us too. And yet the hopes are worth celebrating. The freedom is worth working for. The world Jesus dreamed of is a world we really do want to live in. And even when celebrations turn to ashes, the story isn't over. God is with us, even then finding new ways to draw us toward new life. And a prayer Let us pray for the first, the last, the everything. On the road, may we give all glory, God. Around the table, may we offer our service. In the garden, may we ardently pray. On the hill, may we keep watch until all things have come to pass. God of love, as in Jesus Christ, you gave yourself to us, so may we give ourselves to you, living accordingly to your holy will. Keep our feet firmly in the way where Christ leads us. Help our lips speak the truth that Christ teaches us. Fill our bodies with the life that is Christ within us. Hosanna in the highest. Save us, we pray. Amen. Palm Sunday, parades, celebrations. So for your um, supplies, what are you going to need? What do you like to use? What do you like to use? Do you really love acrylic paint? If you got acrylic paint, go use acrylic paint. Do you really love watercolor? If you've got the watercolor, if you've got the watercolor paper, you know, if you've got some watercolor paper, use some watercolor. If you've got the Sharpie markers, you know, the, the ultra fine Sharpie and you want to sort of doodle instead of like specifically draw, just doodle in some, some uh, palm branch, palm fronds or make them representational of palm fronds. They don't have to be exact. And then just add some splotches, you know, artistically splotches of, greens or yellows and dark greens or light greens and over top of your doodled uh, palm fronds. That would be great. If you, with the acrylic paint, if you're not sure that you could still paint a frond, if you had a, a piece of paper and you wanted to do one big frond or you want to do them, you know, sort of overlapping, you could do that. Do some darker ones in the background, do some lighter ones on the top. Um, you could stamp them if you wanted to cut out uh, from corrugated cardboard, right? Check your recycle bin, cut out from corrugated cardboard uh, the shape of a, of a leaf or um, a longer, skinnier shape that might look a little more like a palm frond. Whatever is good. I think at this time of year, if it's green and it looks like a palm, a long branch with, you know, those fairly symmetrical uh, leaves off of it, people are going to understand that that is a palm frond and you could stamp them. You could, you know, add some acrylic paint to the, and, and it doesn't have to be all solid in one color. You could add bits. So there's a difference, a differentiation between some dark greens and light greens on that hunk of cardboard, press it down on your paper and, and do it that way. You could, you know, markers, you've got markers, do it in marker, do it in pencil crayons. If you love to sit in color instead, you can draw it with the Sharpie and fill it in with your pencil crayons, watercolor pencils. Uh, if you've got it, um, you know, the watercolor again, tubes or, or in the pans. Uh, if you want to just do it in pencil and, and, um, ink, that's fine too. If you've got, um, you know, colored paper around. Great. You could fold, um, you could fold some, uh, some palm fronds and I know you're going to say, but Carolyn, I wouldn't even know where to begin to fold a palm frond. Well, that I am going to show you today, but, um, I encourage you definitely to go ahead and try 
the other mediums. The other mediums you have all spent lots of time doing and you've come up with some truly amazing and beautiful results. Allow your creativity to flow, okay? Create, just go and create. Um, but as far as the palm frond folding, I've got a little something for you. All right. So what you'll need is an eight, this is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Um, you could use any color, it could be patterned. It doesn't even have to be green. Um, again, your recycle bin, that um, a page that has greens on it. It doesn't even have to, it could be an all text page. Um, you know, whatever you want at this point. So the first thing you're going to need to do is you are going to fold uh, this paper into thirds, all right? Um, so now I've made actually little marks and it's thirds lengthwise. Um, whoops. So there we go. And then just making sure that it's as close to a third. That's pretty close. Can't argue that. Yep. All right. And then unfold it. Uh, if you've got a, um, like an X-Acto knife, you could go ahead and just slide that in there and, um, cause I don't think my, I don't know if I could do this with a ruler or not. I hesitate because then I'm gonna, yeah, no. Um, so go ahead then and just cut those into strips. All right. All right, so after you've cut those, um, once you've cut them and use, you know, if, like I say, if you've got a, an X-Acto knife, you can just sort of slice through them. That's great and easy. If you've got a paper cutter at home, that's great and easy. Otherwise, just, you know, cut them with scissors. And then I want you to take one of your three pieces now that you have, and you're going to, now, I had a bamboo skewer, and you know, well, you know the story. You hear it every week. I forgot it at home. So <laughs> this is just, here's what I do have, oddly enough. Yes, a little uh, throw throwback from um, Valentine's decor. Find something long and skinny then anyway that you can uh, then roll. You want to roll this piece. Uh, roll this piece and uh, just roll it up. I didn't feel like I had rolled that. Oops. Tight enough so that it was long enough. Doing this totally off camera. Not helpful, Carol. All right. Okay. As tightly as you can anyway. And then just, um, if you want to add a little glue to it now, that's fine, you can. And then in your next pieces, so here the two pieces that you have left, you're gonna want to fold in half from end to end. So folding across the length of it, end to end. Give it a good crease and then fold it in half again. And then fold it in half again. And the only reason that I'm flipping this up and doing it is just because sometimes depending on the thickness of the paper, you might find that it is easier um, instead of taking the whole, all of that width of paper and folding it, that if you're just taking half of that thickness of paper and then just folding that in half up again right, and then folding this up 
in half. That's great. So now you should have eight sections. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Woo! Phew! <laughs> and then cut those sections. All right, and then you'll do the same with the next piece. So now that we have all of these, right, you're going to take your little piece here and you're going to fold it in half. as best you can and then you're going to do an accordion fold it so you're going to fold it in half again but instead now that you've had like a little tent shape right a little tent um, take that top layer just fold it back to that middle crease so you're creating an accordion fold and then flip it over and then take that and fold that layer over half as well so you have a little accordion fold right it's either a little w or it's an m let's see so the edge that has just the single it has the the two open edges right and just the single fold so the w shape that's the side we're going to cut on and it depends on whether you know you want to cut from that side or this, but that's the sides you have to cut on. The side with just the single fold, not the double folds, just the single fold with the two single edges. So the single fold, the fold in the center. And we want to cut just a little round off the top there and cut just a little bit of a, a point kind of thing so that when you open it up, Right, that you have something that looks like that. And then you are going to, whoops, you're going to cut down those two little spear shaped, the tops of leaves, to about, I don't know, quarter of the way down or three quarters of the way down. All right. Um, hold them so that they're in their valley folds, right? So the, the crease that goes through the middle of each of those little leaf sections is in a V shape. It creates a valley, right? So that's called the valley fold. So that valley crease is in front of you versus a mountain crease. We want the valley crease. And right at the very bottom, we're just going to add some glue. Right. And then I just want you to pinch up that, that fold again, just that accordion fold, just like it was. And then give it a good pinch and then set it aside. And I want you to do that with all of them, right? So one more time. And last one. So again, we want to fold it in half. And then I flip it up. You might find it easier to fold down, like if you do it this way and fold it down, whichever works best for you, right? And then I'm going to flip it over and fold this again this way so that now we have it in quarters but it's accordion folded right and then we want the m shape facing us right so that that's the side you're going to cut on the side that only has the one fold versus the side that has two folds you want to cut on the side that has one fold and it's again about about i don't know third maybe almost halfway down you start just sort of trimming up and creating a around to the point right like that 
And this time, because this is the last one, instead of cutting, we would normally have been cutting down to about that uh, three quarter mark. This last one, I'm gonna cut right apart. Okay, so that I have two. This one's a little dirty, so I'm gonna chuck it. <laughs> and then we have a single. So now what we have is we have 15 of these little guys that you have folded, right? 15 of these and one of these. So the next thing that happens then is the tube that you had, um, you're going to want to flatten. And um, you could use a, a scissors, like the handles to the scissors, um, you know, whatever you might want. Ideally, this would be a little bit thinner um, like I said, that the rolling of the paper, I could have tried to roll it, I suppose, without that, that piece, the bamboo skewer would have definitely been a tighter, uh, a tighter roll, but nevertheless, um, flatten it, right? So now we've got it flat. And the, uh, next thing you want to do is you're going to add some glue and admittedly while off camera, the rest of these I did not do with, oops, whoops, with the white glue. Um, I did them with glue stick, um, just in case you were wondering. So it was faster and a little less messy. <laughs> you know, just a little less messy. Um, so I'm just going to add some glue stick to this. And then you're going to just go ahead and you're going to glue that to the top, right? And it's about a, a, a pinch width from the, from the end is all I'm doing. And then while you're still pinching it while it's drying, just sort of give it a little bit of a flattening out there. Okay. So that's the first one. Yay. Then the next ones that you're going to add on, right? You've got, they've been glued at the bottom, but if you notice, right? If you flip them over, they've got this open unglued portion. So that, this one we, we glued with the um, valley facing up and on the underside. Because that mountain fold right there, right? That's the crease facing you. That's how we want the rest of the leaves to go. So you're now you're going to place your stem in that unglued fold of your two little, they're almost like little rabbit ears, aren't they? Yeah. Um, you're gonna place it in there and then you're gonna glue it, okay? So I'm just gonna Put some glue on here. And again, the leaf facing, you want the front, the good front, the val or the, the uh, mountain fold facing you. I'm gonna place this in. And we're gonna glue that just like that. And then you're gonna follow along with the rest of them.
So once you have all 15 glued, and then what you can do is um, sort of start folding them down a bit, you know, spreading them. You want to spread them out. you can sort of flatten them out a bit. And I think I could have spaced them out some more. That's what I think. Okay. And there we have our palm, uh, our palm frond. So yes, I could have spaced those out a little more. Um, I think that would have been a little more effective, right? But um, not bad. I think for a palm, if I've got nothing else to uh, wave on Sunday, then there is my celebratory palm. And you can, of course, always go ahead and just cut the... Um, Cut the end off, clean up the end there a bit, and there you have it. There's your palm. Woo! Okay. <laughs> so that's wonderful. That's a little fun. Um, I still encourage you, of course, to go ahead and do your... Um, you can certainly pray while you're folding, but I also encourage you to, to perhaps the method that you... Um, the medium in which you truly love and feel most connected then um, create some palm fronds, some celebratory palms. And again, add the words Hosanna if you want um, in it as well. And just have a fabulous week, right? So there we are, Palm Sunday. As mentioned in the reflection earlier, the folding of those um, little bits of palm branch into crosses isn't just a pretty craft. Um, just like the creation of with the drawing and the painting and the folding of paper into palm branches isn't just a pretty craft um, here at Creative Spirit. It is making that connection between this Sunday's celebration and the following Friday's devastation. It is what we do every week, right? We make, we, we it's a different way of feeling the scriptures, of hearing God's word, of feeling God's word and the scriptures that we do here at Creative Spirit. So before we go, let's recenter, uh, feet flat on the floor, backs up as straight as you can, and on a deep breath in, I want you to breathe in hope, and then breathe out celebration, and breathe in hope, and breathe out celebration and breathe in hope and breathe out celebration and together we say creator god quiet my mind before it passes judgment on this prayer my gift of time to you amen so i would Hope that you play some music while you, while you create. Um, ask God to be present with you in your creation. And remember that this is a time for you to create in prayer. It is your spiritual practice. So enjoy, feel it, allow it to embrace you in whatever way. And happy Palm Sunday. And we'll see you next week for Holy Week. Bye.